That's uh, yeah. Thank you. It's amazing, Phil. Do you have a sense of what the argument when Herman had a stroke or whatever happened? They were arguing or discussing the death penalty. Do you have any idea what that was about? Um. So the question was, do I have any idea about what the argument when Herman had a stroke or? you know, when they were discussing in that scene what that argument was about regarding the death penalty. Um, I don't have an idea of the particular conversation, but one of the things that I noticed, because I've also been able to go visit Herman, you know, in these visiting rooms whenever whenever I can go down is, and I, it didn't, it took me a while to understand this, but when, when, when we ha have a small disagreement about something, like when somebody here in this room has a small disagreement, it's kind of our tendency to basically try to like play it down, say, oh yeah, it's not a big deal. You know, but Herman has the completely opposite tendency. He will automatically try to ratchet up any conflict and get it, make it really intense, you know? And I think now, having gone through it, I was for the first time. I was so I was so not used to it, and I was like, "What? I, uh, you know, I wasn't I was like, why are we arguing about this? Not a big deal." But I think he gets a lot out of that. He like it's very normal to get in an argument with Herman because I think like these arguments over little things. It's like he he lacks stimulation, so he wants this. You know, he wants to ratchet it up. He wants to go. You know, make little things into big things. So I think. That's just kind of his personality, and it, at the beginning I didn't understand it, but I think now it kind of makes sense, given his time in solitary. Um, Herman, the question is, did Herman see any of the visuals that were developed? Um, so the visuals that were developed for the art project, Herman was totally involved in, and basically Herman would, you know, they would there would be this process of back and forth, with, you know, Herman would give some ideas, Jackie would create something, draw something, take photographs of it, send it to him, and then there would be this continual, you know, back and forth. And that was how they did the art project. Uh, for the films that we create, I mean, for the visuals that we created for the film, um, some of those animations, uh, yeah, he hasn't seen any of that yet. Hopefully, we should probably send them stills. That was the plan. I hope he gets to see the film, but in the meantime, I think we're going to send him stills. Yeah, right behind. So the question is, has Herman's sister seen the film, and what were her thoughts through this process? Um, Herman's sister has not seen the entire film. She's seen cuts and scenes. I mean, we, this is the world from here, and we just kind of finished it. So we, I mean, I'm sure she'll see it see it soon. She was actually very open, and you know, she she's very happy to talk about the situation um, because you know it's her brother, and she's been trying to get him out. So any attention on the situation was good. I mean, the one kind of touchy subject where we talk about her, her, her son who committed this other murder, that was the one thing she wasn't that comfortable about and we just didn't decide to put her that in the film because I didn't think, you know, it was that relevant. But other than that, you know, she was, she's totally excited by the project, you know, she's totally moved by what, what happens and, you know, I think she was really, you know, and, you know, she's essential to the film because she's the closest to what we have of her and what his sister's life is like now. Yeah. Whatever happened? Whatever happened to Woodfox, the other uh, member of the Angola Three? Uh, nothing, unfortunately. He, the question is, whatever happened to the other member of the Angola Three, Albert Woodfox? And unfortunately, nothing good. He's still in solitary confinement. Uh, they actually moved him and Herman out of Angola to, an, to separate prisons in Louisiana, quite far apart, which I think just makes it harder for his lawyers, who are rep the same legal team is re representing both, so now it's harder for them. But now they're in solitary in different prisons, and, y you know, I mean, we didn't... Part of the reason we didn't include him in the film was just, we weren't gonna... Sh we didn't show Herman, so then having this other voice would even be more, you know, complicated and things, and just trying to keep the, the you know, the focus on, on their friendship. But, you know, Herman, I mean, I'm in touch with Albert as well, and so is Jackie, and, you know, he's, he's going through the same legal kind of process. Just to add to that, the Amnesty International petition is actually for both Herman Wallace and Albert Woodfox, 
and it's going to be delivered to Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal next Tuesday on the, on the steps of the Louisiana State Capitol building. So that should be in the news. Um, oh, people over there. Oh, all the way. This. Hi. <coughs> Yeah, you should go. So Jackie has her own website, and all of it's Herman'sHouse.org. So ours, and, and there are links from our website to her website. It's but hers is just Herman'sHouse.org, and ours is Herman'sHouseTheFilm, I think dot com. But you know that that's the best way, and she has ways you can connect to it. Um, there's actually an amazing book of letters that they edited, like one of the galleries put out a book of their letters to one another over five years of collaborating, they edited it down and um, that's available on, on her website and that was one of, after reading that book, it was like one of the things that made me think, oh this is, this could be a really cool film. Um, so yeah, her, and yeah, there are links from one to the other but hermanshouse.org is Jackie's website. That's a good question. Do you think Jackie will ever build Herman's house? I don't know. I honestly, you know, having followed the process for the last several years, at the beginning I thought it was quite possible, and somewhere midway through I was like, maybe not, and I go back and forth. But for me, I mean, and kind of how we thought about it when we had to figure out, well, okay, he's not going to get out of prison, and he's not going to build this house, so like, how do we end? Like, what is the, you know, what, we can't just keep filming forever. You know, came, we kind of came to the feeling that maybe it doesn't matter that much, you know, whether that happens or not. Like, it doesn't matter if a dream is realized as much as it's important that you, like, have something to dream about. That being said, you know, it could happen, I don't know. Yes, straight in the back. In the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, so that was just a comment about how the house kind of became this metaphor that comes throughout the film and it's really not necessarily about a physical space but about the relationship. And yeah, I mean that's definitely what we were going for, so I'm glad, glad, that, glad that you picked up on that. It was, you know, I think that for us from the beginning, like well, even when I approach this film, I'm like, we're so used to thinking about prisons through this lens of crime and punishment. And like, that's how we see it all day, all night, and we see, you know, MSNBC all the time. And I was like, what happens if we stop thinking about them in that way? Because literally, these are homes. You know, these are people, this is where people live, you know, hours and hours and hours. And I remember one of, you know, I have all these, you know, all this stuff that doesn't make it in the film, but one of the interviews that, the statements that I remember was like, you know, some of these prison architects who I interviewed, I thought, oh, who, like, who builds prisons? Like, what kind of person is like, oh, but they're actually very, in, they, they have a lot of, you know, they're trying to change the world. Like, they actually are like, no, we want to make as nice a space possible. And one of the prison architects said, you know, well, in the 70s, I was really into, in public housing, you know, that was, that I wanted to change the world, I wanted to make, you know, affordable public government housing for people, and then the 80s, all the money dried up for public housing, and they started having all this construction boom in prisons, so I kind of moved into that, and it kind of just stuck with me, I was like, yeah, that's kind of, you know, they're kind of two forms of public housing in, in this country, just one of them is really messed up. <laughs>